I just need to start this video by saying I need Tony to retire. I'm tired of watching her deplete, diminish. I need that superwoman cape to come off, okay? Too long we have seen her just take care of everybody, hold space for everybody else, see her health continue to deteriorate and for what purpose? To keep up the lifestyles of other people, okay? But we're going to get to all things the Braxton's episode three right about now. Now, as a therapist, this episode, chef's kiss. So many different layers. All the scissors have something going on. But we must start with you subscribing to this channel. Yes. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel. Like. Do the do's. Okay. Now, Miss Evelyn, Miss Evelyn, Miss Evelyn, is it just me or are Tamar and Evelyn very similar? Is Tamar a younger version of her mama? Not only that, I feel like all the sisters take care of her financially. And I think because of so many people who are being taken care of financially by the sisters, Tony being at the top of the totem pole, being the breadwinner, and just a trickle down effect, I see how. Things got so bad. What they say is start at the top, the head of the fish, and they go back down. Okay? Evelyn is a problem. Not only that, is she getting lighter every season? I feel like some years ago, wasn't she wasn't she my shade? Now she just so light. Is it this the makeup? Is it the blonde hair that kind of offsets her skin that's already so light? Whatever she doing, I need to her to stop. But her energy is just giving that she is the queen her daughters take care of her and i see the stress the weight of that significantly on tony she said her daughter her doctors do not want her to fly her health is deteriorating she has extreme anxiety because of her health and being afraid that something will happen to her yet she's still performing for what purpose i guess she has a, her own lifestyle but it does feel like i have to take care of so many people I can't let people down. And that is the plight of the black woman. As black women, we are always having to, I don't have time for me. I got to take care of everybody else. My anxiety, my depression, all of that, it's going to have to wait because these bills got to get paid. I got to take care of these kids. I got to show up at work. If I don't show up at work, who's going to take care of that? And we see Tony as a prime example of all of that shit from these years has weighed on her her health, her lupus. Now she's having extreme anxiety. Now it's so out of control that she can possibly have a heart attack. At what point do you say to yourself, I can't do it no more? And that is what I see in a lot of my clients, a lot of black women in general, that we hold the trauma, the weight, all of it in our bodies. And our body starts to shut down, starts to talk to us, starts to say things but we are so conditioned, used to having that cape on, that there is no room to stop. And I think for Tony, unfortunately, I don't see retirement coming anytime soon. But everything is telling me, girl, sit down. You ain't got to perform. Maybe do a podcast. Okay, everybody else got a mic. Amazon selling them. I'm sure you can afford one. Get you a podcast. Interview R&B divas people from the 90s we all want to hear their stories get you a, cute, a little cute little podcast up in your room a studio you go there you record some seasons six episodes get you some coins some ad revenue and sit down i just don't want to wake up one day i don't want to be somewhere and get that tmz notification that something has happened to tony she really needs to recognize my health is not in line with what I'm doing as a performer. Now she's starting to dance. No, girl, no. Okay, not only that. So many things. Kevin Jr., this family needs a lot of healing. And of course, Tawanda being the responsible one is trying to take care of him. Of course, you know, she promised, I'm sure she promised her sister she would take care of him, look out for him. But he himself is having what? Seizures? anxiety, depression, and he done got locked up. 
I'm telling y'all, Tracy was the glue. Tracy was the glue to everything. And we're continuing to see the family crum crumble and move apart. At what point can they be saved? There's just so much healing to do. And it's interesting to hear that Tamar is the only one consistently going to therapy because when I see her and all this stuff in the media, therapy where? And it shows y'all, not saying that this is her, but a lot of people go to therapy and don't do the work. A lot of people pay for them sessions and once that 60 minutes is up, what are you doing after them sessions? Because you have to make sure the therapy, the next session, what's happening in that gap? Whether it's a week, whether you go weekly, bi-weekly, what are you doing in between? All that stuff I'm saying to you in that hour, is it sticking or is it going out the other ear until you come back the next time? Because I just don't know if I'm seeing the results of therapy in her actual life. But that's just my perspective. I want to know your thoughts, okay? Now we see that Kevin is getting out of jail it must have been some kind of domestic thing that happened with him and the wife. He didn't show up for court. I'm sure he's been going through a lot that maybe court was just not on the top of his mind. I really don't know. But we see the sisters trying to save him. See, they're all trying to save each other. But at one point, when do you save yourself? Everybody's trying to save Kevin. Everyone's looking out for each other. But are they really? They say that that is a sisterhood. Even Evelyn says that uh, you guys promised that you guys would get along and be together. Those expectations are too high. Evelyn, I don't even know, has checked in with her own grief before putting pressure on her daughters to get along. There's no healing that has happened. There's not been consistent therapy, consistent work. But the mom is telling her, y'all need to be doing this while paying for my lunch. The expectations of what she wants from them do not match where they are and i think that's been something that i have seen over and over again that her expectations have been here but they have not always been aligned with her daughter's needs her wants versus their needs and we see that in a lot of mother-daughter relationships where the lines are blurry it's more like a mother a friendship mom um especially when money comes into play the dynamic it just goes like this it's never like this and I'm constantly seeing her live her best life. They take her out for meals. I'm sure she's been flown back and forth between LA and ATL. Don't really know if she's in DC that much. I highly doubt that. But being flown, flown back and forth, she got a cooking show with Tamar. Once again, the Braxton name is being used to elevate Evelyn while her daughters are hurting. I'm not seeing the connection of like, Hey, I see you guys are hurting. What what can I do for you? What is needed from me? Instead, let's do this show, a recipe show. Okay, let's continue to get these coins. The healing, yeah, y'all need that. But over here, production, all this other stuff. I just think we haven't really looked at the role Evelyn plays in the destruction. The destruction of the sisterly bond. I think there's trauma going back way back before they became famous, when that divorce was happening, all that religious stuff, the religious trauma, the umbrella and the effects of how religion was su such a forefront. We have not talked about that. We have not. Okay. But Evelyn is part of the problem. Let me know your thoughts because I think she is. Okay. Now I want to get to Trina. And the therapist. I really want to put some respect on Spirit because I think it's Dr. Spirit, but they keep referring to her as a counselor, which is interesting to me because I feel like they refer to a lot of these therapists on these shows as counselors. I think there's some kind of like legal and ethical something where they can't call them therapists, have to call them counselors, but I believe it's Dr. Spirit, okay? Um, correct me if I'm wrong that if it's not Dr. Spirit, but I've seen her on a lot of shows and I could have sworn it was Dr. Spirit. Let me put some respect on her name. Now, she decides to go to therapy, okay? And I don't want to like criticize 
the therapy session because it's TV, it's adding. We don't know what number therapy session this was. Was it the first? Was it the fifth? But it felt kind of intense very quickly. And for someone who has not been in therapy consistently or has not really done their own work, trying to go to those deep spaces off the first initial session or those first couple of ones, I probably wouldn't have done that. I would have helped her probably get used to the space, get used to therapy before I went to tell me about those dreams. Tell me about the memories that you have because it can be off-putting and for the wrong client can have them not want to return to therapy because it was too quick, too scary, too fast. But once again, I don't know what number of session it was, but to me it was like, okay, if this is her first session, let's have Trina get used to it first, okay? But I loved how Trina, you know, went to therapy, decided I want to work on myself. The dramatics from the production of her walking in slow, it felt like a mob scene. I didn't really need all that. But I enjoy how the show is breaking the stigma on Black women going and getting help, depression, high-functioning depression, anxiety, and how all of that trauma manifests in your body. It shows up through the way you eat, your relationships, how you show up in the world, emotional eating, grief, throwing yourself into work instead of working on yourself and healing. I have enjoyed that. But I think with her, it's going to take time because she has so many layers of grief and trauma. And she brings up going through grief with her ex-husband. And I've heard this before from people where they are grieving the loss of someone they used to be with while being in a current relationship. And sometimes men cannot handle that. You and me, you haven't been with that, that fool in what, five years, 15 years? Why do you care that he dead now? See, there's a level of emotional intelligence I think men and women lack when it comes to those kind of things. I'm not grieving what he, the relationship that we have. I'm, I'm grieving what he represented. And maybe during that time, what he provided me. Was it children? Was it when we were married? You can grieve somebody even though you're not in love with them. You can grieve what they represented, what they brought to you, what they gave you. And for her... Gabe wasn't the best person, but he gave her sons. He gave her a life. And it was good to see how she did talk to him about it. And eventually he, he came around. And again, I was kind of like, why are you asking her about her therapy session? Hmm? I don't like that. I don't like when people, when partners go to therapy and then they go home and they significant others like, so what did you talk about? Because I want to make sure you really working on your shit. That's what it's really about. What'd you tell that therapist? Did you tell her how you haven't been to work in a week? Did you tell her you'd be cussing me out? Did you tell her this and that? Let the person use therapy for what they need it for. Stay out the mix. Because I can also turn somebody off with therapy where they don't want to go no more. Okay? So when your partner goes to therapy, let them go to therapy. And even though I don't think Bond was being investigative in a negative way, I think he's being a a little bit inquisitive to make sure that she's really um, getting what she needs. And it was based off how she can't return from therapy. He wanted to check in with her about how she's doing. But there are people out there who'd be like, what you tell that lady? Hmm. I want to make sure you really tell the lady the truth. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen it in couples therapy. Oh yeah, he going to therapy, but I really don't think that he's telling that lady what he's supposed to be telling her. He's not really working on what I think he is. Oh, she's going to therapy, but when she comes home, she still acts the same. So I'm wondering what she's really doing. I've seen it. I've heard it. But y'all got to let them people work on themselves the way they want to. Okay? Please. All right? This was a heavy episode. But once again, I enjoy the breaking of the stigma, how we are working on ourselves. And I hope that someone who watches that episode decides to pick up the phone call from a therapist or call a therapist, reach out because you are probably going through some of those same things that they're helping us see and work through. But this is episode three, a lot of healing still needs to be done. The family is just so fractured and they're focusing so much on each other and fixing different things, but the core of the healing has not even happened. The trauma from the beginning, before the fame, all of that, you have to get to the root of things in order to really work through them. But of course, 
Let me hear your thoughts. What do you think of this episode? What do you think of them healing? And I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you like, you subscribe, show me some love. You can always send me a super chats. I love those. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.